Um, so, as Don mentioned, we're the Global Studio. My name is Jeff Piper. I'm here with Matthew Sullivan and Cord Harris over there. Cord Harris is our engineering expert, and uh, Matthew Sullivan is our architectural expert here. So uh, you're going to see work from both of these guys popping up in here, and uh, they're both here. Cord's here, courtesy of CH2M Hill. So we're going to thank them for making him available, and Integris Architecture makes Matthew available for us as well. Um, so I'm going to kind of roll through this stuff pretty quick, so we can get to the fun stuff. Um, we're a team of architects, engineers, and builders. We're a collaborative group, and our primary mission is to provide design services to nonprofits. So we've been working with Agro since 2006. Um, we started in LADN, worked in San Jose, Tierra Nueva, um, and as Don mentioned, now we're kind of moving upscale to assist Agro in their capacity development process. So we're focusing primarily on two or three key components. The first is land assessment and land selection. How do you choose the best possible land to buy to minimize your development costs and maximize the development potential? And the second part is the village design and layout. How do you design and uh, plan that village so that over the 10-year 10, 10 course, seven-year course, or in the village mind at the 50 year course, the 100 year course, how does that village continue to grow? How do you engender a sense of ownership? How do you help that village move down the line to transfer from a cattle farm or a coffee farm into a village of 2,000, 3,000 people? Uh, in that vein, we started doing a land selection methodology. How do you look at this land? What's important? What's not important? What's, what are the stoppers? What's the critical components? What's going to be way too expensive to fix? And how do you document that? So we created a manual, and there's actually a copy of that manual over on that table if you want to take a look at it later. The intention of that is to allow the Agros in-country staff to evaluate this land and make these decisions. To help with that, we went down to Honduras and ran a training program and we evaluated a test piece of property with uh, a bunch of the in-country staff. And most recently, we went back down to Nicaragua and ran an expedited field analysis of the current piece of property under consideration. Um, again, with in-country staff from Nicaragua and in-country staff from Honduras. So, once that decision is made to pursue this piece of property, there is uh, secondary verification, and so that may be a water study by an in-country engineering uh, firm, legal analysis, topography, basically all the due diligence you would go through when you're buying a house. You know, is the title correct? Is everything copacetic? Once you've gone through the process of deciding to purchase the land and you've started negotiating for it, you're basically into the master planning part. Now this is where we come in on the second phase. This is the village design. And again, it's a long-term plan for the property. You need, to be a, you need to create a vision for this property so that it can grow from what it is right now into what it might be in five years, 10 years, 20 years. So we concentrate on the human habitation part. There's other teams that are concentrating on the agriculture part, human capital development, social development. And we're working together with all those teams throughout the process. But from our point of view, when we're putting together the master plan, the, in, the expertise that we're trying to input is from the human habitation part. We start with a community engagement process right off the bat. And so what you're seeing here is the big image is from LADN. And that's also from Elidin on the top right corner. And the idea is that you work with the community to let them design their village. You're providing input, you're providing guidance. But the intention is that they're telling you what they need, they're telling you what they want, they're telling you what their hopes are, they're telling you what their dreams are. And it's an iterative process. So as you work through it, by the end of the process, they're telling you what their plan for their village is. It's no longer your plan, it's no longer your village, it's their village, their plan. So 
a lot of what we do is concentrated on lot and public space layout. How are we going to take a property that may have had 10 people living on it and 200 cows and put 2,000 people on it with 200 toilets? Um, and so this is kind of an, you can see the exercise where we'll continue the community engagement throughout this work so people have a hand in crafting their own space. And an extremely important part of this is the overlaying of the infrastructure design, potable water, wastewater collection and treatment, gray water, surface water transportation, agricultural processing, human waste management, all the things that are happening out in the street that make a city work. And especially when you get to the scale of this, these become critically important. So we're going to talk briefly about Corral de Piedras, which was the property that we did the expedited field analysis down in Nicaragua. And I'm going to jump over to Google Earth and do a little fly through so you can kind of see the property in real time and locate it and where it is. At least I think I am. Okay, so can everybody hear me if I'm talking away from you? Okay, so many of you or most of you are familiar with Nicaragua itself. So here we have Managua. Here is the El Tuma office, the Matagalpa region, and the Hinotega region. So I'm going to zoom in here to the Matagalpa area where many of the current villages are. Whoops. <coughs> Wrong button. So here's the Matagalpa area. So here's the Matagalpa city. Here's uh, San Ramon and El Eden down below. San Jose is up here near the El Tuma office. Here's Tierra Nueva. Up here in the Hinotega area is Corral de Piedras. This is about a currently about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half drive to El Qua which is the nearest uh, town, if you can, it's a town. Um, so here's El Qua, you can see all the roads going there. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll zoom in a little closer to Corral de Piedras. And here is our piece of property. So we have a major road uh, major-ish road running through the property here, which is nice. We've got a river running through this side. These purple areas indicate uh, places where we thought would be appropriate to put housing uh, clusters. So I'm going to zoom in a little closer and we'll start taking a look at topography. So you can see we've got a flat plain for a good chunk of the site, flat-ish. And then up here, as this property climbs up this hill, this is where one of the primary water sources that we found was, which provides a great gravity flow system. How many acres? It's about 700 manzanas. So that is... A, <laughs> throw, you under the, throw you under the bus. And so as we kind of turn around here. It's also important to note the great piece of property in the north is also the Yeah, those are they're designated differently because they're two different legal lots, but they're uh, the same, they're all being sold together. Um, so this road out here goes to a small town, this road goes to another small town, La Pita, and then there's a secondary road that comes along the river. I'm going to jump over here. So this is one of the maps we produce as part of the analysis. So you can see these are the possible housing sites. 
transportation routes, river comes in on the side. All these points that are marked here are either water points or uh, points for housing. And the, in this case, we had fairly decent legal information about the boundaries, which is wonderful. We were able to map that well. Part of the land analysis is that we're trying to use freely available tools that are fairly simple but can provide good information. So we're using Google Earth. You, you, know, you can download it on the web, it's free, it's wonderful. You can get cuts out of Google Earth that can enable you to do quick water source or quick water distribution analysis. So this shows a cut starting at pretty much where the water source, one of the water sources is and running straight down to where one of the housing sites is. It shows adequate fall for gravity distribution system from that point. You can, this is boring, um, but it's, uh, it's critically important. So we identify each water source, we estimate its flow, we look at its purity, we look at whether it's guarded, we look at whether potential sources of contamination are, what it might be used for, and we uh, tabulate all of these for analysis during these analysis process. So now the fun stuff. Um, it's a stunningly pretty piece of land. Um, and you can see we've got, this is one of the proposed housing areas, so we've got a nice flat area with kind of the mountains beyond. That's uh, the uh, high area where one of the water sources is located. Again, fairly pretty. And looking on into the distance there. Currently they've got a fairly uh, a large section of uh, horticulture going. This is tomatoes and chiles that they're using uh, gravity fed irrigation for. And so now what we're gonna talk about is kind of the development stage of this lot. What happens after you buy the lot as you move forward? So part of the concept for capacity development is to front load some of the property development to increase the success rate over the long term. Some research has shown that that first year can be extremely grueling and that health problems can prop up as a result of not having access to basic sanitation and basic utilities. So this shows the development, of, we're gonna go through the development of the lots here, show when the uh, infrastructure comes in and talk about something we're calling the basic health block. Um, and thank you, Matthew, for all the wonderful graphics. <laughs> um, so what we're seeing here is, a, and I, I don't use the word idealized because it shows no reference to topography or site, it's a generalized layout. So uh, blocks of, uh, blocks that indicate the light green is your family parcels and the dark green might be future public open space. So the main pass, all the lots front onto the main pass, these are your primary circulation pass, large enough to permit uh, pickup truck travel. Secondary pass, so minor pass and drainage, and this is where you would locate a lot of your uh, on-site drainage, your gray water drainage, uh, your water conveyance, your potable water conveyance may come down through this side. And Part of the idea between of these secondary paths is that if you're controlling your gray water, these can be heavily planted to provide natural remediation for a lot of your gray water. So now we're talking the basic health block. So this is a structure that would be pre-developed on the site that controls, that has uh, potable water to it, that controls your gray water effluent, has a place for agrochemical storage and a place for food storage. This was developed in conjunction with PATH and other health professionals to mitigate the primary health concerns that have been found in uh, early villages, early village development. And this would show future expansion. So the families at, as funds become available to them, as they become more successful in their farming, would grow this, would grow the house themselves. So to focus in a little bit more on that, 
This is that basic health block. So you can see we've got, you know, our water source, our potable water may come in at this point. We've got a cistern for uh, catching roof water to supplement that. Provide a pila with a drainage point so we can control where the gray water goes so it doesn't pollute anything on the site. Uh, food storage locker and a separate agrochemical locker. Um, was, that's important as the health risks from storing those two, two things together are actually a very common problem in this area. And um, an improved stove with a way to get the smoke out of the area. So that is it at its most basic level. That's it with a uh, roof over it and a one room shelter. And so that part is, that's essentially the idea for the first thing that goes onto the land. So the families could then choose to expand that, adding more space as their family grows and as funds become available, and then adding a porch place, you know, it's probably a more important thing for them in the long term. So that's essentially it.